So when I was 15, my mom was friends with a man who wanted to date her, Jake. My mom was not interested in a relationship with this man at all. And in fact, she was dating another guy, Colt. My family is full of pretty serious rednecks, and my mom is no exception. So one day, my mom invited Colt and his roommate, Frank, over to shoot some guns at our home range. We shot for a while and eventually went in around dark. So my mom and Colt got drunk after we went in. Frank couldn't drive due to some brain damage, so they ended up staying the night at the house. Around 2 a.m., I was still up playing video games, and my mom and Colt were in her room asleep when Frankie comes running down the hallway, saying a truck just pulled into the driveway. I look out the window and see it's Jake. Apparently, my mom hadn't texted him in a few hours, and he's extremely possessive, so he went by to check and see if she was home. Keep in mind, Colt's ranger was parked in the driveway and is very obviously a guy's truck. Think about spike lug nuts, spur hanging from rear view, and skull hydro dip dash. Jake absolutely flips. He starts ringing the doorbell nonstop, beating on the door, walking around the house beating on windows, screaming my mom's name, and circling Colt's truck. At this point, my mom and Colt are awake, and since we have blackout curtains, she tells us to keep the lights off and hide in the hallway, and if we don't do anything or respond, he'll think no one's home and leave. Colt, being completely sober now, is understandably pissed, threatening to go out and deal with it. It is now important to point out the size difference between Colt and Jake. Colt is 5'5 five five and 125 pounds, while Jake is 6'3 and 240. Jake could punt Colt 50 feet if he wanted to. Because of this, my mom forces Colt to stay inside. This went on for 45 minutes. At one point, we see on the camera monitor in my mom's room that Jake has punched the side of Colt's truck. Then we hear the screen to one of the windows slide up. The window in question is locked, and Jake couldn't fit through anyway. Ah, oh, thank God. It's at this point that I think of the only thing that will make Jake leave. I grab a gun, act terrified, which at this point I am, and I walk to the living room and ask, Who the hell is it? Out the window and Jake realizes it's me and asks where my mom is. I tell him she's out with her friends and that I haven't heard from her, and I'll call him when she gets home if I'm awake. He says thank you and left. And after all the shit he did, that's all it took for him to leave. And honestly, I was amazed. I genuinely thought that I was going to have to shoot him. Later on that night, around 4, we hear his truck outside again. He squeals his tires down the road and obviously pissed that mom still hadn't called him. The next morning, he's back again at 10. Again, beating on doors and windows, screaming and trying to get a reaction. Colt again tries to go out and handle it, but mom won't let him. He finally leaves again and Colt goes out to look at his truck. There's a 3 inch deep dent on the side of his bed. Colt is understandably pissed and tells my mom to let him know if that fucking creep comes back. Jake had beat on our doors until his hand bled. This also may have been from hitting the truck, but I don't really know. And he had blood on the doors and windows. My mom wouldn't let me call the police because she felt that it would just cause unnecessary strain and that she thought it was over so the cops were unfortunately never involved. She was also worried he'd do worse if the police were called. My mom stopped talking to Jake after that, and I never felt comfortable in the house at night again. Once I started driving, I didn't stay the night there very much, opting to visit during the day and go back to my dad's at night. So Jake, let's not meet 
again. I'm 5 foot 3 and 115 pounds, so I guess I'm pretty small. That's my reasoning for being very submissive over all of this. This is a lengthy story, so I'm just going to skim and I'm not the best at telling the story, so prepare yourself. When I started working at this fast food chain, I was 16. It was my first job and I was excited to finally take my first steps into adulthood. This co-worker of mine was training me. For privacy purposes, I'm going to call him Frank. Frank, at first glance, looks young, 19 or 21 at most. We got along and nothing wasn't too bad nor alarming. Light conversations about anime and such. And I remember things started to change slightly when he was talking about a video game character and none of our co-workers knew who it was. When I saw the green hat character, I said, Oh, that's Link! How cute! I used to watch my brother play Legend of Zelda Four Swords, and he looked at me and said, Marry me. I laughed it off and continued on with my day. For the rest of my shift, he would hover over me and ask me personal questions like my age, favorite things, and etc. Being the open, friendly person that I was, I answered happily. I told him how I loved butterflies and that I was 16. I'm 17 now and I've had several jobs since. So when an older man asks you for your age as a minor, it's never a nice sign. Moving on to December, I've been at this chain for a month now and my manager asked me if I wanted to come to their company secret Santa party and I agreed. When the day came, I arrived with my now ex-best friend. A Frank arrives on the phone acting busy and such, but I thought nothing of it. During the whole party, he was on the phone. I was getting food when he tapped on my shoulder while still on the phone and handed me a beautiful butterfly necklace. I didn't know what to say besides thanking him and thinking he was my secret Santa. Then later, my other co-worker comes up to me, handing me a gift card to Starbucks and a plush. I asked why, and she said that she was my secret Santa. I thought it must have been a mistake, and I went on with my night listening to my old best friend tell me how I should date Frank, which in my mind was never on the table. January rolls around, and it was Frank's birthday. We were just working until I heard one of my girl co-workers, who was into him at that time, wish him a happy birthday. Being that person, I wished him a happy birthday while my other co-worker asked how old he's turning, and he said 27. Might I add that every shift that I work with him, he would take several photos of me before and after my shift, commenting about my hair, my skin and eyes, and often said how cute my nose was. Again, not wanting to cause a scene, I just laughed everything off. <sighs> That's always the case, isn't it? We don't want to cause a scene. I did start telling him to please stop, but of course, he wouldn't, no matter how many times that I ask him to. Now, I'm going to skip to May, my birthday month, and of course, I was working on my birthday. I went to the back door as usual, and due to COVID, I had to ring a doorbell and wait for someone to open the door. Out of nowhere, Frank pops out of the bushes, handing me all kinds of gifts. Today was his day off too, so I was generally confused. I remember thinking how the hell did he know my birthday? I never talked about it since I don't like celebrating it, and he followed me around for a few minutes before awkwardly leaving when I apologized that I want to get to work and not get yelled at. In July is when I finally found a new job. I quit due to sexual harassment that I had to endure for the nine months that I've worked there from my shift lead. That's a whole other story, 
But when a man starts getting handsy, don't laugh it off. Shut that shit down. It got really bad when that ex-best friend that I mentioned earlier started showing all my co-workers, including Frank and that shift lead, explicit photos of me that she stole off my phone without me knowing. I was very insecure at that time and was in an abusive relationship, so I would give anything this boy asked of me. Anyways, at that point, I've had enough of it. After being interrogated about the shift lead, I put in my two weeks. On my last week, everyone was talking about how that shift lead got laid off for sexual harassment. Frank and I were doing dishes and the topic came up and I awkwardly told him about it, now knowing how everyone knew my story. The shift lead would often grab my ass, rub my thigh, talk about my boobs, about how if they were bigger, and also the things that he would do to my body. I would say stop politely, but he would continue. When I started yelling and saying stop more assertively, he would often make me do humiliating tasks like clean the greasy floors on my hands and knees or cleaning the dining room when it was closed due to COVID. When I told Frank this, he shrugged it off and said there was no reason for him to be fired. And I remember being absolutely shocked, retorting, Well, I'm just glad I'm leaving this hellhole, and left it at that. A month into my new job as a hostess, everything was going well. It's a restaurant, but everyone just comes there to drink, so it's more of a bar. On one of my 2 a.m. shifts, Frank stops by on his bike, and I try to be friendly, but was getting frustrated when he kept cutting me off from talking to other people. I then walked away to bus tables because no one else would do it, and he couldn't follow me into the restaurant. After doing all the tables, I come up to the counter to see my co-workers giggling. What's happening? I ask. The other hostess smiled. That's so cute, how your boyfriend takes photos of you while you're working. That's so cute, like how obsessive he is over you. He wouldn't stop talking about you to us. Boyfriend? I was, and still happily remained single after all the bullcrap of a relationship and the only person they could be referring to was Frank. Then it dawned on me. How the hell did he know where I was working and my shift schedule? I didn't tell anyone besides my parents and my brother. A week goes by. I may have gotten a little overdramatic, but I didn't know what else to do. I told the other hosts at the counter to tell him that I'm not working today and dashed inside. I told my manager that this man, Frank, keeps taking photos of me as I'm working and it's making me uncomfortable. My manager told me to stay in the back room while he went and handled the situation. Our restaurant is very popular in the area, so it's very crowded in the front. Frank with his bike was blocked customers and that's what my manager was telling him. My idiotic ass was popping my head up a little under that backroom window where I could see what was going on in the front. I freaked out a little when I see Frank get aggressive with my manager. He begins thrashing when my manager tries to lead him out of the front. Suddenly, Frank throws his bike and tries heading into the building. A few male waiters see what's happening and were informed by my manager. I remember one waiter standing in the back room with me watching the door as another was practically fighting with Frank. I could only hear yelling outside the door and then it went quiet. I spent the rest of the shift like that, cleaning silverware with that male server. From then on, people would walk me to my car even if it was broad daylight. From August to November, he would be on his bike passing by the restaurant from a distance and he would be watching and taking photos for 10 to 20 minutes before leaving. Now, the reason I thought of putting this here was now it's been a little more intense besides just the looking from the distance. Due to COVID, I'm not needed anymore because now my restaurant is takeout only. I've been working seasonal jobs while working at the restaurant, but now I'm not working waiting to get my schedule.
Because I was bored this day, I drive to my local mall just to do a little Christmas shopping. While driving, I look in my rearview mirror to see a recognizable face. It was Frank. I practically choke on spit seeing his face in my mirror. I try not to get the best of myself and knock it off as a coincidence. Yeah, it wasn't. He followed me throughout the mall, then later followed me as I drive home. No one knows where I live, besides that old friend, and I'd like to keep it like that. So I drove for an hour, getting lost and taking every random turn that I could, until I lost him. I now believe this is how he would track me down. My car isn't common, but it doesn't stand out too much. I've rarely left my house since. It's January 2021, and ever since the start of this new year, I've been getting phone calls going like this. Hello? Hello? And the call ends. Along with that, I've gotten many random messages asking about gifts and delivering me a gift. I'm not one who usually uses social media, but these messages were all over mine. All of them were from newly made accounts across Snapchat and Instagram. On one occasion, an account started sending me photos, photos that I never sent to anyone. These photos were photos of my cat and I that I saved in my Snapchat album. Just photos after photo of things that I've never sent and ending with, I have a gift for you. I deleted both apps along with deleting almost everything off my phone. A week ago, I downloaded Snapchat again due to some dumb assignment that my teacher wanted us to do with that crap social media app. One of my old co-workers sent me a message and I opened it. Um, Frank wants to give you your Christmas gift. Wanna stop by? Maybe I'm just overreacting, or maybe those accounts were Frank. I just want to say my personality have changed because of all of this. I'm very protective now, and rarely talk to anyone, and not as friendly as I was then. It's only been a little over a year, yet I feel like I've aged 10 years or more. And I just want to say, Frank, let's not meet and fuck your Christmas gift. I'm a frequent visitor of this subreddit, and I decided to share a story of something that happened to me years ago. Please excuse my English, as English is not my first language. Several years ago, I was about 19 years old, and I'm a female by the way, and I was studying in college. During exam period, I would always go to the public library in the city center to study. They would have special places for students to study. This particular day, I had went there with a classmate. It was a weekday and I finished studying at about 2 p.m. I asked my classmate if she would mind if I left. She said no, so I packed my stuff and left the library. As I walked out of the library, I walked straight into the city center. As I left, I felt something brush up against me. Considering that I had just walked out of the quiet library and into the crowded street, I brushed it off. I proceeded to walk through the center to get to my bus stop. After about five minutes of walking, I couldn't seem to shake the feeling that something was too close to me. So, I grabbed my phone, held it up and looked into the screen to see if there's someone behind me. And that's when I saw this man. He looks about 40 and was walking behind me with his eyes set onto me. I felt uncomfortable because he was giving me weird vibes. He just looked off. He was walking with a limp while staring right at me. He was wearing a scarf with a suit jacket, really old track pants and old gym shoes. I didn't think he was homeless or a junkie. He was just weird. But to be safe... I put my phone in my bag and put the bag over my shoulder away from him. That's when he walked up to me 
and started walking next to me. At this point, I've been walking for about 10 minutes through busy streets, and he kept his eyes on me and was walking so close to me as if him and I were walking together. Once I almost made it to the bus stop, I saw my bus drive off. I didn't want to wait for another bus at the bus stop or have this man wait with me or know which bus I'm taking. So, I decided to continue walking to the central station, which was about 8 minutes away. As I crossed the street, I noticed the man kept walking and didn't cross the street. I felt relieved. I pulled out my phone to text my mom that some weirdo had been following me for about 15 minutes at that point. But not even a minute later, this man comes running out of the alleyway right in front of me, I almost tripped when I saw him, and he kept walking in front of me. Every 10 seconds, literally, I counted it, he would abruptly turn his head back to look at me. I had even made a small Snapchat video of it. At this point, I was so nervous, but I was almost at the central station, so I just kept going. That's when he stopped, turned around, and started talking to me. Um... I saw you at the library, he said, and I didn't respond. We were together at the library, he repeated. Again, I ignored him. He didn't get the hint and kept talking. Hey, where are you going? Are you going to the central station? I'm going there. I'm taking this bus. Which bus are you taking? At that point, I had enough. There were people walking by and nobody said anything, so I just ran straight to the central station and got on my bus. I sat behind the bus driver just in case this creep decided to run after me, and I saw him looking around before getting on his bus. Once I was on the bus, I finally had a moment to think about what happened, and I realized that this man had been sitting there at the library, watching me for hours and watching me leave to go after me. I remember feeling uneasy all the time, but I ignored the feeling, thinking it was just nerves before the exams that were coming up. This experience really made me uncomfortable because I had been coming to this library to study for years. Even in high school, I would study there till 9 p.m., and leave by myself in the dark. I can only imagine what would have happened if I had met him then. So, psycho library stalker, let's not meet again. I live in a large city in Canada where I go to university downtown. I take the land rail train back and forth between home and campus. It's usually a 15-minute walk between the train station and my house, but I need to cut between an apartment building scheduled for demolishment and the very tiny stretch of trees in order to reach the path that runs beside the tracks. My train station is next to a recreation facility used for volleyball and basketball and many more. The train is partially underground and partially above the ground, and I get off at the station directly across from my university. However, it is often quite sketchy as it is downtown, and my city is quite well known for its crime rate. I am a sciences student and often find myself in the lab until later in the evening, because it's winter and further north than most Canadian cities. It gets dark really, really early. I usually call my mom or boyfriend in my walk to the train as I have several creepy encounters in the past. One of which, I was waiting at the light to cross the street to the train and a homeless man approached me and got really close to my face. At that time, my mom was in my headphones, so she heard him say, <laughs> You have really pretty eyes. It was almost comedic when my mom said, Run! In the same tone as that song where the beat drops after run. 
Luckily for me, there were other students present and it never escalated, and after he walked away, I just muttered a quiet thanks and shuffled away from him. Everyone who takes public transit in a large city knows that there is your fair share amount of homeless and druggies that you just avoid contact with and continue on. This experience I'm going to tell you about was much more serious and a lot more sinister. One morning in the dead of winter, I was walking to the train in the late morning. There were a lot of people walking, so I felt pretty secure and didn't pay too much attention to the man in a long black coat and gray gloves that was walking in the same direction as me after the abandoned apartment buildings, and I boarded the train along with another dozen people. It wasn't until that night that I realized that I probably should have been paying closer attention. I had a late lab, so I took the nearly empty train home well after rush hour. It was around 8.30 to 9 p.m., so it was dark and there was a decent amount of snow coming down. I got off the train at my stop along with a group of young people. With the logo of the university, the trains at the nearby rec facility also got off the train and we were walking to the building in clumps. I didn't notice the man from that morning immediately because as I started on the path, I was looking at my phone to dial my mom for the walk. I should have been paying more attention because I didn't actually notice him until he stepped directly in front of me to intercept me along the path. I looked up, startled. The man was wearing a long black wool coat, gray mittens, and a gray toque. He looked to be in his late 20s to mid 30s and had a closely trimmed brown beard and a brown hair stuck out from under his toque. He smiled at me, but his blue eyes looked cold despite it. I immediately started running through my imaginary scenarios on what to do and took a quick glance over my shoulder to the university athletes who were almost to the rec center and steadily getting further from me. The man and I were very nearly alone. He said to me, You're very pretty to be out so late. Where are you headed to? My heart dropped. I really wish I was witty or good at thinking fast on my feet because all I said was, uh, nowhere. He acted as if I didn't say anything and took a step towards me, still smiling that creepy smile of white death and dead cold eyes. I can walk you home if you like. I just stared at him in horror and he continued. You live that way, don't you? And pointed in the direction of my shortcut through the trees by the old apartment buildings. At this point, it clicked that this man had followed me from the apartment to the train this morning and he knew which station I'd get off and which path to wait for me on my way home. All I knew at this point was that I could not let this man know where I live and I couldn't go home through the isolated shortcut where he could do God knows what to me. Instead, I made a blatant lie and said, No, I have practice. I was hoping my backpack and general university student look would be enough for me to sell it as I quickly turned away and scurried after the student athletes. As I got to the doors, I turned to look at the man, and he hadn't moved and was staring at me. I've never seen that look in a person's eyes before. It was so malicious, and his smile was replaced by a sneer. As soon as I was inside, I darted toward the largest group of people that I could find and called my sister, who I was living with at that time. I told her what happened and asked her to come pick me up. I had a sneaking suspicion that that man was still waiting for me to attempt to walk home. She said she was driving on her way home from work and was about 5 to 10 minutes away, but she'd pick me up right outside the rec center doors. It was the longest minutes of my life as I stared at the facility doors, waiting for the man to come in looking for me. But he never did. 
My sister called me when she pulled up, and I pretty much ran from the building to her car, and she hit the lock button as soon as I was in. The drive home follows my usually walking path for a while, but forks off close to my shortcut through the woods. As we drove past, I gasped and pointed out the indistinct shadow of a man among the trees. I knew it was him, and I knew he was waiting for me. I never saw the man again, but now, whenever it's dark out and isn't busy hours for commuting, I get off at the next station and walk home from there as I walk beside a very busy street. Even though it's five minutes longer to walk, it's worth it. And I never want to see those cold blue eyes ever again. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you want to send me a story to read, feel free to do so. My email is in the description of the video. And if you want to follow me on my social media, just to get updates or maybe to talk, the links and info for my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts are also in the description. And finally, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And turn that bell on to be notified for upcoming surprises. And remember, your fear feeds me.